So what we have here is the Dave Grissom DGT SE in uh, gold top. It's the gold top version. So the gold top version has moon inlays. And if you go with the burst version, it will have a flame maple veneer and bird inlays. And so I thought the gold top was, well, just something I was more interested in. So hopefully you're interested in, interested in it as well. Let's go over these specifications. We have a mahogany body with a quarter inch maple cap. It is a real piece of maple. It is there. And uh, this does not have the maple veneer as it is painted. It has two Dave Grissom S or DGT S pickups. Uh, S meaning that they were made uh, overseas and they are based on uh, the original core pickups. You have a three way switch. You have a coil split on the tone control and then you have two volume controls. So his, what makes his guitar unique is he doesn't do two volume, two tones. He does two volumes, one tone, which I think makes sense. You have the Paul Reed Smith standardized tremolo system, comes with a tremolo arm. And of course, uh, going to the neck, you have a rosewood fretboard with a, a DGT carve mahogany neck. Now this is a mahogany neck and it is the Dave Grissom carve, or at least they sang and it feels almost exactly like uh, the core Dave Grissom neck. And when I say almost, I mean, I can't ever say anything 100%, but I, nothing is, is pinging me that this is not the right neck. It feels like the right neck. This is a multi-ply mahogany neck, so there is no scarf joint. When they say multi-ply, I'm assuming it's three pieces um, of, of mahogany, and uh, that makes it really stable. And it's, of course, a set neck. PRS style tuning keys. This is made in Indonesia by Cortec, and it specifically says that on the back of the headstock. Then you have the Paul Reed Smith nut, which is graphite, and of course, 22 uh, medium, medium jumbo frets that are nickel silver. It comes with a deluxe SE gig bag. These are some of my favorite gig bags. It's very well padded. It has a gel padded shoulder straps. And one of the features I show pretty much in every one of these episodes is that it comes with a hook that's built in. I don't recommend you do it with the guitar in it, but you can hang this in your closet when it's just a gig bag. Uh, and that's a nice way to get it out of the way. So things included with it are a tremolo arm, a uh, truss rod adjustment tool. There is a dual action truss rod in this guitar. And of course, an Allen wrench for the tremolo system. Let's go ahead and remove the tremolo arm. There you go. It is a push in style tremolo arm. And there is a, uh, small Allen screw adjustment on the back right there if you want to tighten it up. And then of course is included with that, uh, the Allen wrench is included. Okay, so now we're ready for the geeky stuff. So let's start at the headstock. And first thing we're gonna do is take notice to the DGT logo that's on the truss rod cover. This is the only place the DGT logo is on the guitar. So that's kind of cool. So if you don't want it to say DGT, you can actually take that screw out and flip the cover backwards if that's something you're interested in. Now looking at the nut, we're gonna to check to see how they cut the nut. We have a little tool that will check that. They're a little shallow. What I mean by shallow is, you can see a little bit of wiggle there. So these could actually go a little deeper if we wanted them to. And a way to check that if you don't have a tool, push down on your third fret, and then just eyeball how much play you have between the fret and the string. Now you can see just a little bit right there. So you know, this looks great, but also if it was laying on the, the fret, that'd be okay as well. So there is not a lot of play. So I'm gonna say the nut slots look fantastic. All right, coming back down to the bridge. First thing we're gonna take notice is they're using the bridge that's not like the core uh, guitars. This is the bridge you see with the SEs, which I actually like. It uses a steel saddle instead of a brass saddle, which I prefer. And it uses a steel block instead of a brass block, which also I prefer. So let's see if we can knock it out, dude. Something else to take notice to is for the binding, they just scrape the side. So what's great is you have this gold top right here, but then you can see the maple cap. That's the maple cap right there. So there's no plastic binding. That's actually the maple. Now what I did is I checked to see how straight the neck is and the neck is very straight. In fact, there is no relief in this neck at all. So let's go ahead and see what the action's at and then we'll check to see if it has any buzzing spots. So pushing down on the first fret and checking the 12th fret, we're showing the action at one and a half millimeters, which is very, very low, or 0.05. Very low action. Let's check to see if there's any dead spots or high frets. <laughs> 
Now to do that, we can play each note individually or we can use a fret rocker. I prefer playing each note. I tell you guys all the time, just play all the notes. If you find a spot, then use your fret rocker. But for illustration purposes, we're just gonna use our fret rocker. So let's go ahead and see. Sometimes I get asked why I check the setup when I'm doing a review on a guitar. And it's really because I just want to document everything that I experience with this guitar. That way you can use this as reference, either as good or bad against whatever guitar you get. Okay, so the frets were absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and listen to see if we can hear any grittiness or feel anything. And no, they're not scratchy at all. These feel like they've been polished and there's no tooling marks. And that's what sometimes you want to look at on this is to see if you can see any tooling marks where they didn't polish them. It's very typical in a, in a factory that they use sandpaper to do all the polish work on a guitar. And so uh, your local tech or a luthier might use a much, much finer grade of polishing, especially if they're using any kind of Dremel and polishing wheels to polish the frets. These look great. There is no noise. You can, you can hear just randomly go in spots. No issues right there. Let's check the fret ends. So now what we're gonna do is the sock test. And of course we use a nylon sock and then we're gonna test the fret ends to see how well they're polished or if they're sticking out. What's important about this test here is this is Arizona, which means this guitar has been sitting for at least two weeks here in Arizona drying out. And so if there was something that was gonna happen, it would happen. And there's a little bit of a snagging, right? I just felt it again. Let's take a look. And you can see right there. So not the best, it didn't tear the stocking. And it didn't feel abrasive when I was touching with my bare hands, but I would say this is definitely a three to three and a half out of five. Let's do the other side. So let's go ahead and start with the base side now. And the same thing, I'm just gonna go. And this doesn't feel nearly uh, as, as, so this is definitely a four. You can see barely any marks. So four and a half maybe, so four to four and a half. Either way, it's really close to five. This one, if I do the other side again, you can see it just snags a couple spots. It's just a couple frets and I can probably find them. That one right there. And you can see in here. See? There it is. So what's funny enough is I'm saying the whole fretboard, but to be honest with you, in this particular instance, you only have three frets that are, that are just a little, not as polished as the rest. So overall still very good. Three and a, three and a half, three out of five, but uh, definitely would be a four or a five if just those three were polished perfectly. So let's go ahead and confirm that this is 10 inch radius and it is a 10 inch radius fretboard like you'd expect on all Paul Reed Smith. One of my favorite radiuses. Okay, so looking at the nut, we have 42.32 millimeters or 1.668. And checking the 12th fret, we're at 2.071, so two inches or 52.60 millimeters. Okay, thickness of the first fret is 22.66 millimeters or 0 0.892. And thickness of the 12th fret is 0 0.983 or 24.97 millimeters. Now checking the next shape, I thought for sure it was gonna be more like a 59 Les Paul, but it was actually the closest to a 54 Les Paul. Now, of course, it's not exact, but again, we're just trying to give you an idea what shape you're gonna see. The 54 neck is just a slightly bigger than this neck at the first fret. And I wanna show you that 59 just because the 59 is also still a little bigger, but you can see the carve seems reminiscent. And looking at the 11th fret, you can see that the shape again is very similar. And of course, just a little smaller. So it's not as big as those necks, but it's definitely a chunky neck. Now looking at the back of the guitar, you can see that the back plates are top mounted. They're not recessed in. It's not the end of the world, but it's something that you would like to see. Just aesthetically looks a lot better than just an afterthought of putting it on the back. But again, it's up to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's take a look at the uh, the cavity. Now, I have not seen this in an SE, so this was pretty exciting for me to see, and I'm gonna share it with you. First, let's talk about the basic stuff. So what we have is a metallic shielded cavity right here, so it's conductive shielding paint. They are not shielding the back plate. It's not something they typically do anyways, but I'm just letting you know. So what we have here first is two 500K alpha pots for volumes, both with a treble bleed installed. You can see the other treble bleed right there. And then on the tone control, which the tone control is the push pull with a 0.22 microfarad capacitor for the tone control. And of course the three-way switch. And again, all really nice quality componentry here. Everything looks really good. What's different is normally when you look at a core PRS guitar pickup, 
it is a three wire pickup. And then when you look at the SE pickups, they're four conductor pickups. These are just like cores, they're three wires. You have your, your hot, then wrapped around is, the, is your ground, and then here's your, here's your wire for coil splitting right there. Just to show you a little bit of solder burn right there. Somebody at the factory burnt the wire soldering it, but it didn't damage the wire and didn't go through. I don't think so. Hold on, let me see if that's exposed. It's not exposed. So if they would have burned it to the point where the wire was exposed, that would be uh, worse. Considering this wire is actually mounted to the pickup, I can see why even if they burned it, they wouldn't exchange it out for time purposes and expense. We have the output jack. It's a basic standard output jack. And of course a football plate, which is different than what the core would have, which is their squared like a aluminum plate, but this is fine. So now what we want to do is check these pickups to see what they're measuring. The bridge pickup is measuring at 8.8. .8. It's not a very hot pickup by any means. So let's go to the neck pickup and that one is 7.4. So again, these are very low output pickups. Now real quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the inductance as well. On the bridge pickup, we have the inductance at 5.37 and the neck pickup, we have the inductance at 4.30. Not a lot of power, not a lot of high output. I'm curious to see how they'll sound with the amp. So a couple things before we get into the pickup, just wanna show you that they're not shielding the pickup cavities, which isn't a big deal. Now the pickup, exactly like I said, look, there it is. There's your, your two wires and then your third wire for coil splitting. Normally they're, they're labeled G and B, which is the manufacturer. So these are definitely something different. And I love how they put the GGTB. This is definitely, I think the evolution of SEs. They're now like really mimicking the quality features of the core guitars, not just the aesthetics. And I think that's the evolution. So originally you'll see a lot of guitars look like the real deal, but now you're seeing it in the inside. You're seeing more of this guitar being the real deal. This to me is the closest I've seen to SE getting to being a core. Very cool. Now, of course, all guitars are gonna come with different weights. This one's coming in at 7.3 pounds, so, so very light. My guess is the average weight for this guitar will be somewhere between seven to eight and a half, nine pounds. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is some sound samples. We're gonna be checking out uh, how the pickup sound, running it through a clean amp first, and we'll check the tremolo system, and then we'll go to an overdrive amplifier. First, we'll be using a Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb Reissue with a stock Jensen speaker, mic'd up with an SF57. We'll start on the neck pickup, and I'll have volume and tone at full, and we'll just see how it sounds. <laughs> What I like already is it's balanced. Sometimes uh, neck pickups can have a very scooped kind of sound where the low and the highs poke out, but the mids, you lose those. And this seems to have that. So I love that. Let's go to the bridge. And what's nice is this bridge seems to be more in the mid territory. That's where you get a little bit of that nasal sound I love. Um, which is nice because sometimes the single or the bridge pickup on a clean tone is not something I prefer to listen to. Wow, that sounds great. I actually like that more than the neck pickup. Every once in a while, I love a bridge pickup and a guitar to the point where I don't even want the neck pickup anymore. And I'll do something, instead of going to the neck, I'll just run the tone control quarter turn back. Let's see if this works. Yeah, not quite quarter, almost halfway. So 40% travel back. Yeah, I like that better. So this is the bridge with the tone control turned 40% back. I like that more than I like this. And you know what's funny is this sounds softer and more pleasing pickup, but that bridge with that tone control, I feel like it kind of pops. I like. Nice. Okay, let's go uh, to the middle position. And what I want to do on the middle, since there's two volume knobs, Okay, let's check. So it is wired the same way as like a Les Paul. So in other words, uh, where you have your both humbuckers on, either volume 
will turn the volume off of the guitar. Okay, coil split. Let's go to the neck pickup. This is the coil split neck pickup. Nice. It's not as punchy as I like in some of the single coil tones. But it sounds so good. Okay, let's go to the bridge. This is bridge coil split. What I hooked up now is the Bad Cat Black Cat 112 combo, and I have that mic'd up with the same SM57. Let's go ahead and start with some pickups. One thing to notice that I noticed when messing with this is that when I'm in the neck position, the volume control is the back one, and then the bridge is the forward volume control. So bridge volume, neck volume, master tone. Interesting. Okay, let's start with the bridge and uh, see where that takes us. Let's go to the neck pickup. A lot of low end right there. Which makes it really great for single notes. Just a single note sounds so big. Okay, let's coil, spot, uh, coil split that. I love that. It's funny, the coil split, it just drops just enough to where I feel like the amp's like not getting all the gain it used to have. Okay, now this is gonna be the bridge coil split. A little more bitey. Now what I want to do is clean up the amp a little bit. See if I... Wow, that's good. Okay, let's do the neck pickup though. So on the bridge, you get So what are my final thoughts on the SEDGT? Well, it sounds fantastic. In fact, every, every time I was doing the sound samples, I was like, this is my favorite sound. No, wait, this is my favorite sound. No, I really like this. Well, I could see where I'd use this more. I just, it didn't have a bad tone coming out of it. And this is a lot because SEs are great guitars, but a lot of times, you know, they're kind of the guitars you buy just to upgrade a few things, maybe upgrade the pickups, but these pickups sound fantastic. Tuning keys, sure, you can upgrade to some locking tuning keys and that'll make your restrings faster. And there's some benefit to that, but the quality of these tuning keys, there is nothing to complain about. The bridge stayed in tune and I have this exact same bridge on my Paul Reed Smith CE, which is an American made guitar. And I love the bridge just as much as any other bridge. This is the kind of guitar that doesn't require any modifications, uh, in my opinion. You just get up the guitar, you pull it out, you play it, maybe do a light setup, and just 
enjoy because it's a great guitar and one of the best SEs I've seen them put out so far. I'm glad to see them building a really strong uh, brand in the not crazy stratosphere price points and these more obtainable price points. They're just, there's just a lot of guitar here for the price. I can't say much more. So on that note, I'm just going to say thank you for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.